example, uh, with transmitters in the laboratory putting out uh, even kilowatts of power, very well focused down into those micro points. You can shatter, for example, giant steel bolts mm. or do things like that because you can get severe deposition of energy in very small volumes of material throughout a uh, narrow section of the material. And that becomes a very lethal thing when you do that. And so you can get very localized heating. By the way, psychokinesis, when the human being is able to bend or break metal, mm -hmm. uh, the, it's done exactly by the same mechanism. The two cerebral hemispheres of the brain can act as scalar projectors, and they can produce uh, rays or beams or waves which interfere in a local region. And if you're holding a stainless steel bar, a stainless steel uh, fork, and you get one of these bends or breaks in there, uh, that's the way it's being done. And by the way, I have a friend who I don't think wants his name mentioned, so I won't mention him. But uh, I have a friend who's doing some very excellent scientific work in that area. What he's doing is he'll use something like a stainless steel rod. He'll buy two of them. And he'll take to a place where the, uh, a person does psychokinetic bending. And he will have one of the rods bent psychokinetically. The other will be retained as a control sample. They will then take both of these samples back to the laboratory and section them. And he will look at the cross-sections of both of them under the electron microscope. The interesting thing is the normal control rod, you see the grain pattern just like you would see in a normal piece of metal. But in the, in the rod which has been bent or broken, if you will look at that on the electron microscope, you will see uh, the grain structure has been drastically changed at the microscopic level. It looks like you're looking at the surface of the moon. You see intense heating in little puddles and little holes, just like you were looking at the pockmarked surface of the moon. A completely abnormal thing. And by the way, that's the thing you can't fake on your belt buckle either. No, nope, it's you there. Cannot, you cannot change the grain structure of the metal in that fashion by any sleight of hand trick. And some of the people that are doing these are little old ladies in tennis shoes. In fact, they make the best benders. They really do. And we have one, uh, Greta Woodrue. I think you know Greta. Yes. She shrinks the metal. Yes, indeed. You have other physical effects that let you know that uh, it's not done on the belt buckle or by sleight of hand. By the way, in about two weeks, I'm going to go down and learn how to walk on coals. And I suppose I'm using that left and right hemisphere to do that. Yes, indeed. Uh, since we're on that subject and since we're talk talking about scalar interferometry, we may as well cover the mechanism by which that's done. What happens here, I'll have to cover one other effect of this. In that interference pattern, if it were perfect, if you were making perfect scalar waves, in that interference pattern, the energy that's in there would be totally trapped. In other words, a photon could not be radiated out of there. It would be locked as if it were in a bottle. And I've been calling that an energy bottle. Now, in the real world, you don't make a perfect one. So some of the energy escapes and radiates away as photons, as electromagnetic energy radiating away. But if you have a pretty good bottle, anything that comes in in that bottle, uh, in, the, in its range or in its frequency range, or even close, is going to get locked up in there and isn't going to get out. And so you can do a very amazing thing with that. For example, you can place that kind of a bottle uh, on an object, say like a steel object, and you can be putting in the power now from a distance. Understand, this would be in the laboratory. You would have two beams coming in here, which are crossed where the object is. The energy which you're putting in on the other end of the beams is appearing in the bottle, and so you would have a metal object in here heated quite hot. It would be glowing. Because it's not a perfect bottle, you'd be able to see it. You'd be able to take a radiometer and actually measure the temperature to prove how hot it is. You'd have a white-hot bottle, <clears throat> white-hot metal in that bottle. Now, if you turn the power off on the other end smoothly, then the energy in the bottle, you are creating the energy at a distance. That energy will just simply die right down. And you can turn it off and reach in instantly and pick up an absolutely black object that is not hot at all. It's absolutely cold. Hmm. <clears throat> so you can just sort of suck all the energy right out of there, or you can annihilate the energy is another way to, to, uh, to look at it. That has been done. Uh, <clears throat> and that, of course, can be quite useful. Now, used as a trap, if you have an energy bottle that's 
placed, let's say, under the bottom of the feet, under the soles of the feet or around the skin of the feet. If you have such a bottle <coughs> in the human body and that bottle is correctly made so that heat energy, which is electromagnetic energy, entering it gets trapped, then that foot can walk over hot coals and not be burned. And that is exactly the way fire walking is done. Fire walking is demonstrated widely throughout the earth. Uh, many cultures and many people do it. And as you are pointing out, some of the people here in the United States have now taken up showing that you can do fire walking. Well, there's a group here in Santa Monica that does it. <laughs> about 80% of the people that go through about a four-and-a-half-hour course, which is a mind-quietening technique more than anything else, not only walk on them, they pick them up in their hands. That's true, and you'll see them holding them for several seconds, and you'll see the coal going red hot. And if you look at the temperature of the coal and you're looking at it in the hand, you're, and the light and frost effect can only be pressed so far. You realize that you couldn't possibly be looking at that. And I, I'd make your prediction, this effect will grow, and you're going to find more and more people learning to do it, I, on I'm that taking a number of firemen. For your handling fire, I recommend great care, and I don't recommend anybody trying it by themselves at all. Well, I'm taking a number of firemen down there. If there's anybody that needs to learn how to handle fire, I think it would be the firemen. Yes. But it, it is a real phenomenon. It can be demonstrated, and uh, I think you'll see it being demonstrated from now on, just uh, so that, you know, people will become aware of the fact that this phenomenon is real. Well, I just got back a couple of weeks ago from Fiji, and I videotaped them walking on those hot coals. Uh, hot hot rocks they were, and they were so hot that they would uh, almost instantly ignite a fresh palm leaf whenever you threw them down on them. Yes, the uh, the phenomenon is very impressive. Now, you know, given an energy bottle created by the two cerebral halves acting as a scalar uh, projector, scalar interferometer in a transmitter mode, uh, the human being has the capability of doing that. Now... You understand what we're talking about is a human being has the capability to be a beautiful high wire walker and do all the fancy tricks on the high wire. Now, one normally does not develop that ability. That does not mean it's a fake. Tom, uh, the music means we're going to take a break. I don't believe this first hour has gone. Uh, the callers are lining up with some very, very incredible questions for you. Let's take a break for the 11 o'clock news. Okay. And we'll be right back right after. Or, Tom, you want to talk to them, and we'll talk about free energy a little bit later, okay? Okay, fine. All right, let me give the numbers for those that do want to get in and talk to Tom, because at, particularly I'm interested in you calling in if you've seen these strange weather patterns that Tom has talked about, the two-thirds of a circle formed in the sky with uh, about five miles in diameter with long, thin clouds uh, extending out uh, in a radius from it, like a, a radio formation. If you've seen those around the Los Angeles area, we would like to hear from you. The numbers in Los Angeles... Starter, I just wanted to say, when you were mentioning about the walking on fire, yeah. that uh, you didn't say, kids, don't try this at home. <laughs> yeah, don't do that at home. Okay. Yeah. That's um, very important. Very important, because it takes a lot of uh, mind... Uh, exercising and attitude straightening and a lot of things to get that done. Yeah, and that, that sounded very interesting. Um, this really isn't a question. It's more or less a, a statement. You know, you were talking about you, you were interested in uh, people that uh, might have seen those formations in the sky. Yeah. I bet you a lot of people have seen those, but they more or less just passed them by as like a jet, uh, jet streams or, uh, you know, jet exhaust. Would that be possible to mistake them for something like that or a formation jet exhaust? Well, what you'll find is um, people see it and they say, gee, what an unusual cloud. Right. Uh, and, and they don't think that much about it because we don't normally go around looking at the clouds and trying to compare this cloud with that cloud to find out what types of cloud are in the sky, you know, what the normal types of clouds are. And so we, we have other things on our mind, and after a while it just fades away. We remember we saw an unusual cloud, and that's it. Yeah, I'm, I'm really amazed uh, by what you're saying. As a matter of fact, it's the first time I've heard about this. Uh, my next question was uh, the documentation to substantiate uh, your, your claim. I, I've never seen it, or at least I've never heard, uh, you know, Dr. George giving the weather saying we might have scattered uh, rain from the Russians or anything. It, um, now, you, you were saying that you're going to be uh, 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 d making a paper 